This tutorial is an introduction to the basics of AI navigation in Unity. We'll create a scene with an NPC that can wander around with a somewhat realistic behavior. Then we'll add more characters to the scene and have them wander around aimlessly. This is a good starting point if you want to add AI navigation to your game. Then you can build on top of what we make in this video to create more complex AI behaviors. Let's set up our project. Make sure you have Unity 2022.3 or newer. Then create a new project using the Universal 3D template. Let's go to Window Package Manager. Make sure you have AI navigation. We'll also need ProBuilder in the samples. Make sure to import the URP support. We need a scene to test AI navigation. I've created this using ProBuilder. Go to Tools, ProBuilder and ProBuilder window. I like to dock this window to the side of the scene view just for quick access. First, we'll need a ground plane. So go into new shape, plane, and then you can draw it like this. For an easier time making these shapes, you can activate grid snapping with a grid size of one. To create walls, we can use the cube shape. Go to new shape, then cube, and you can drag and drop to draw your 2D shape on the floor. And then when you release the mouse button, and move the mouse up and down, you can choose a height. So a height of three or four is good for our purposes. We can also use poly shape to create our walls. Click on new poly shape. And here we're going to click on the floor to add points and draw the 2D shape of our wall. Then when we click on the starting point, we can move the mouse up and down to choose a height. You can also use this inspector here. So if I want a height of six meters, I can enter it here. Then when I'm done, I click on this button, quit editing. And here I have my shape. With these simple techniques, you can create a scene like this. Now we need a nav mesh surface in our scene. So let's create an empty object. Let's call it nav mesh surface. And let's add a nav mesh surface component to it. Here we can set the agent type of this surface. So for now it's set to humanoid. I can open the agent settings and change the default parameters. I can change the radius, the height, the step height, max slope, and the mesh link parameters. I'll also set use geometry to physics colliders. And in the object collection, I can set the included layers. So for example, if you have moving objects or colliders in your characters, you can assign this to a layer and exclude it here. So I'm going to exclude the transparent FX and ignore Raycast. Then all we have to do is click on bake and our nav mesh data is generated. To visualize our nav mesh, you can go to this AI navigation panel in the scene view. Click on surfaces, then show nav mesh. This panel can be hidden. To bring it back, you can right click on the scene tab, go to overlay menu and enable AI navigation. We can also collapse it. And by clicking on this button, we get the same menu here. So we're going to hide the nav mesh for now. In the old navigation system, you had to mark objects as static. So now it's not even an option. So here in the static menu, you don't even have the option of setting an object to navigation static. This makes setting up navigation much easier. You just add a nav mesh surface to your scene and bake your navigation data. You can also have multiple nav mesh surfaces for each agent type. For example, if you want a different nav mesh for characters and for cars and for monsters, you can have a nav mesh surface for each specific agent type. Okay, now that we've set up our nav mesh, let's work on setting up our character. For my character, I'm using robot Kyle URP from the Unity Asset Store. It's an official Unity asset that you can get for free. Make sure to import it in your project. Let's go to the Unity Technologies folder, Space Robot Kyle. Let's go to Prefabs and let's add this prefab to our scene. Let's unpack the prefab. So this prefab comes with a bunch of components. We actually only need a, an animator and the character controller. So let's remove all these components and only keep a character controller and an animator. So here I have a character that's already set up with an animator, a character controller, and a nav mesh agent. So to add a nav mesh agent, just add a component nav mesh agent. 
and you should get this. I didn't really change the default parameters. Our character controller is completely optional. So the NavMesh agent will take care of movement. But if you want collisions with the world, you can add a character controller or you can add a kinematic rigid body, whichever suits your needs. As for the animator, I created my own animator here. This is the animator that comes with Space Robot Kyle. We actually only need the speed parameter and the idle blend tree. This is my simplified animator. We only need a blend tree for idle and movement. As we increase the speed, we're going to be playing the walk animation, then the run animation. On our NPC object, we'll create an NPC script. In this script, I'm using unityengine.ai. It's always a good idea to put all your game code in the same namespace. You can choose any name you want. For this mono behavior, we'll need the presence of navmesh agent and animator. That's why we're using the require component attribute. Here we'll have a reference to our navmesh agent set to public because we're going to be accessing it from other scripts and a reference to our animator. In the awake method, I'm using get component to get these two components. I also created a current speed property that will return the current speed of the agent. In NPC animator, we simply set the speed parameter of the animator to NPC current speed every frame. This inherits from NPC component. So I'm using NPC component for every component on our NPC. It has a reference to the NPC set to protected in order to be able to use it in the child classes. And I have a virtual awake method where we simply get the NPC component from the parent. When we use get component in parent rather than just get component, the game object searches for this component in the same object and then in the hierarchy. This gives us the freedom to add these components to child objects of the NPC. That way the root object is not crowded as you add more components. And believe me, as your game grows with dozens of components, the inspector of your root NPC object will get very crowded. So sometimes we need to organize these components in child objects. Now we want our character to wander around an area. The area will be defined by a position and a radius. Our character will choose a random position inside this area and will move to it. Then when they reach the destination, they will pick another point and move to that and do this over and over again. Now there is a problem when you pick a random position. We could be inside a wall or outside the nav mesh completely. Luckily, the AI navigation package has a solution for that and we'll explore it shortly. After making this simple wandering implementation, we can add more complexity to it. For example, we'll make the character stop from time to time. We'll also add a timer. So when the NPC takes too long to reach their destination, they will choose a new one. Let's start by adding an area script. So this area will have a radius. In the on draw gizmo selected, we'll draw a wire sphere just to be able to visualize this area. Area will also have a convenient method to get a random point inside the area. First, we get a random direction by using random.insideUnitSphere multiplied by our area radius. We eliminate the Y component of this random direction. To get a random point, we add this direction to the position of our area. Now that we have a random point, we need the closest point on the nav mesh to that point. And for this, we use position. This works pretty much like a physics raycast. We give it our random point and it outputs a nav mesh hit variable. We also give it a max distance. Now you have to be careful when setting the max distance. So in the documentation, they recommend to only set the max distance to twice the agent's height. So this is a maximum value that you can set. Otherwise, you'll get performance issues. So when the method returns true, we set our final position to hit that position and we return it. Let's create an NPC wonder script, which will be a child of NPC component. In this script, we'll need a reference to our area. Let's write a method to set a random destination. And in the start method, let's use that method. Let's also write a method that will return a boolean if we've arrived. Our agent will have arrived when the remaining distance is lower than the stopping distance. 
In the update method, we'll check if we've arrived and we'll set a random destination. Let's set the area to public because we need to access it from external scripts. Let's also rename it to area with a capital A. Back to the editor, let's add an NPC wonder behavior to our NPC. Also, let's create an area. So here I've created two areas. So just create an empty object and add the area script to it. So this is my first area and this is my second area. We'll have our NPC use the first area. Let's run the game and see what it does. So here the NPC is choosing a random destination inside of area one and is moving towards it. Once the destination is reached, the NPC will pick a new destination. Okay, that's exactly what we want. Now let's make it a little bit more interesting by making the NPC pause from time to time. For this, let's use a finite state machine inside our NPC wonder script. Here I created an enum called eState with wandering and waiting. And we'll have an eState variable called state, which will be set to wandering by default. Let's add a change state method, which will take the new state as parameter. Here we'll define what happens when we've entered the wandering state or when we've entered the waiting state. In the wandering state, we'll use our set random destination method. We'll use a wait time variable to keep track of the time we spent waiting. And we'll use a max wait time to determine the maximum time the agent will wait. Let's go to change state. When entering the waiting state, we'll set wait time to max wait time. And in the update method, if we're in the waiting state, we'll subtract time.delta time from wait time. If wait time is lower than zero, we'll change the state to wandering. We want our character to start in a random state. So we use random range between zero and hundred. If the returned value is superior to 50, we change the state to wandering, else we change it to waiting. We also have to stop the character from moving in the waiting state. For this, we set agent.isStop to true, but when entering the wandering state, we have to set isStop to false to allow the character to move. Let's expose wait time in the inspector. In the update method, if we are in the wandering state, we'll check if the character has arrived, and if so, we'll change the state to waiting. Now back to the editor. We have a more fleshed out inspector for our NPC wander components. Now it shows the current states we're in and wait time. We're going to run the game. Our NPC starts in the wandering state. When it reaches the destination, it will switch to the waiting state and wait time will be set to three. And as you saw in the inspector, it's going down from three to zero. So when playing the game, you'll notice that the character is smoothly slowing down and stopping. That's because we set the is stop attribute of agent to true. We can also directly set the destination of the agent to its own position. This will work, but it will bypass the slowing down that the agent does by default when reaching the destination. So instead of this, we'll be setting is stopped to true. Let's add some randomization. So we don't want the character to always wait three seconds every time. So we're going to add a few variables to randomize this max wait time. We'll mainly use current max wait time, which will be computed from a randomized value between max wait time and max wait time plus this random value. When entering the waiting state, we'll set wait time to max wait time plus a random value between zero and max wait time random. So now the character will wait somewhere between three and eight seconds every time it's in the waiting state. Now let's add a max wander time to prevent the character from staying in the wandering state for too long. When entering the wandering state, we'll set wander time to max wander time. So now the character will change state to waiting when it has arrived or when wonder time is less than zero. So back to the editor, we'll test all of this. So now the character is in the waiting state. They will start wandering and you'll notice that once the wonder time has elapsed, the character will immediately go to the waiting state. Now let's add more characters to make this more fun. Let's save our NPC character as a prefab and let's create a new script called NPC generator. 
In the script, we have a reference to our NPC prefab, a reference to our area, and the number of NPCs we want to generate. So in a for loop, we'll create the characters. We'll start with a position. We'll use area.getRandomPoint. And for the rotation, we'll have a random rotation around the Y axis. Then we use instantiate to create a new instance of NPC. And we'll get the NPC wonder component. And we'll set the area to the area of our NPC generator. Back to the editor, create an empty object. We'll add an NPC generator script to this object. Let's assign the NPC prefab and also the area. Let's set it to area one and the count, let's set it to 20. Let's add another NPC generator. So let's copy this component and paste as new. So for the second component, we'll set the area to area two. Okay, now we have 20 NPCs in each area. Each NPC is either wandering around or waiting. And with the randomized values, we get some pretty realistic behavior. Let's increase these values. So let's set the number of NPCs to 50. That's it for this tutorial on the AI navigation package. Thank you for watching and see you soon.